In, in the article, I do argue that these emerging technologies and enhanced capabilities um, open more opportunities for South Korea to play expanded role um, in, in the Indo-Pacific the theater. Um, long time ago, it started out as a military, purely military blood alliance. However, it has transformed itself into a more complex, comprehensive alliance that transcends military um, across all the different sectors. And enhanced capability of an ally, it's not bad for you. So in that context, the more South Korea is capable, which is a good news for uh, the United States, and there's no reason to um, go against it, I actually think it will be welcomed by the United States. I am personally very relieved that the new administration has moved away from the strategic ambigu ambiguity. And it's, it's known that you, South Korea is um, US ally for a long time. So Seoul doesn't have to shy away from that. So to, in order to mitigate Pyongyang's mis miscalculation, um, I would say the first thing Seoul needs to do for itself is to have uh, established a, a clear, clear uh, strategy. So um, often the policy towards North Korea has been um, you know, uh, debated in the domestic South Korean policy. And it has often been a, a casualty of um, domestic political polarization. And so needs something that can transcend that domestic populism and um, that can have a long-term effect. And it needs to be clearly stated so that North Korea knows what South Korea is doing and will try to do so that the deterrence effect kicks in. And the second step is with that clear vision for South Korea, South Korea needs to strengthen US RK alliance. And um, it has been um, falling apart or um, souring a little bit in the past couple of years, but we need to really focus on setting the cohesive front. Um, make sure we understand each other and we're, we think through this and have the same strategic goals. Another step in, in regards to US RK alliance, the joint military exercises has been stopped to, in my opinion, somewhat brings North Korea to the negotiation table to somewhat please um, the leadership there, but it hasn't worked. And joint military exercises, particularly important because it, it can test, it's not, we're not doing this to threaten North Korea, we're doing this to find out our weakness. Um, most importantly, deterrence, it's really about perception. <laughs> and you need to make clearly state that what you're doing and what you're capable of, and that message has to be delivered. And the North Korea should be able to see what's going on clearly. And it, that you need that for deterrence the leadership hasn't really captured the essence of deterrence in that sense. We need to more actively promote what we are willing to do and what we want to do for South Korean um, security. And emerging technologies can support this by elevating both of these countries' um, um, weapon systems to a similar level that they can talk to each other. And this is very important. So from the top, they commit to each other and then it will trickle down to a working level and tactical level so that these system, we can find out how to work with these the systems and in a cohesive way to pursue a shared uh, goal. What's concerning about North Korea testing these weapons is not the test itself. These are concerning because 
how of how North Korea is taking advantage of them, how they're using them. So they're not testing like um, uh, a more of a defensive uh, capability. They're actually testing uh, war fighting capability weapons. That's one point that it's concerning. And second point is that they're using these tests to somewhat formulate the terms of negotiation to benefit them. And it, they have been doing this for a long time and it's, it has somewhat worked, um, you know, brinkmanship, salami tactics, but this is what is concerning, not the test itself. And it's an imminent threat that um, in, in a context that South Korea is not ready for it. Like the incident of Chanha. So it's like similar to that, you, if you don't have the, the actual detailed plan ready, you could just spend time sitting there trying to figure out what to do. And that's not a good response. And that's what US and ROK needs to work on. What do we do under such, such and such scenarios? Um, especially uh, if you talk of hybrid warfare, which includes political warfare, cyber warfare, um, like, how do you say this is peacetime? How do you say this is wartime? That borderline, very ambiguous. So during, I would say, current situation, what best, what can we um, as US and RK do to deter North Korea? Um, I think, first of all, uh, from the leadership, we need to recommit and go through the strategic interest of both sides and see how they align. We need like one clear strategic vision that can go for a, for a long, longer period. Another thing that South Korea and U.S. can work on is how to implement, how to apply these new technologies not just in the military uh, arena, but beyond uh, military sectors. Uh